The following program is a production of the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Hello, I'm Michael Masser. I'm an Extension Fisheries Specialist with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, the Department of Fisheries and Allied Aquacultures here at Auburn University. This is my colleague, Dr. John Jensen. John and I are here today to talk about how to clean fish. It's interesting that fish consumption is kind of going up here in the United States, and there's many reasons for that. People recognize that fish are high in protein, they're low in fat, usually low in cholesterol, and low in sodium. In fact, many people on restricted diets, their doctors have told them to eat more fish and seafood in their diet. But as we've learned over the years, John, is that you know most people eat fish out. Yeah, that's right, Michael. Uh, about 75% of all the seafood consumed in the United States is consumed in a restaurant. There is quite a large portion of uh, extra seafood beyond that's what's consumed in restaurants and at home that's purchased in the store that is caught in our reservoirs and lakes and streams across the United States. And I believe that figures around three and a half to four pounds per person. So it's a good amount of uh, fish. And uh, what happens, though, is people bring that product home. Sometimes they're mystified as to how to clean it. Sometimes, because of all their many years of fishing and experience, they already know how to clean it. But uh, we've learned through all of our work uh, with our fisheries work in the university that there are a lot of people who have a lot of questions about how to, uh, how to skin a catfish, how to fillet a uh, bluegill, how to fillet a bass. People are really interested in product these days that has no bones. It used to be when I was a kid, I could consume a fish, and, and uh, the fish would go in my mouth, and the bones would come out, and it was kind of natural to do that. These days, people are looking at most of our food, our meat products, without bones. And uh, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to try to show people how to fillet fish without bones and also go through some of the traditional methods of scaling a fish and cleaning a fish so that they can take it home and be successful in uh, cooking it and eating it. I think that people will learn something. Even if you're a fisherman that's been uh, cleaning fish for 30 years, you might see a little different technique or something you might want to try. Or if you're just the... Uh, the homemaker or the person going to the grocery store and buying a red snapper, but it comes as a whole fish, you want to finish filleting that fish for your favorite recipe. We will say that there's many more seafood recipes available nowadays. You see them at the stores. You see cookbooks like from the Catfish Institute and, and all kinds of places. So I think that, that we're trying to encourage people working in the aquaculture and seafood and fisheries industry are trying to encourage people to, to learn how to cook seafood at home because it really is very easy to cook. And the purpose of this video is just to show you ways that you can clean them at home. You know, one of the things I've found out is that you can go to a seafood market or go to the grocery store and find a lot of different products that are fillets or fillets being uh, free of bones. Or you can find whole fish and products that could be further processed. If you let the processing plant do the further processing, there'll be an added on cost. If you do it at home, sometimes you can save a little money by doing that. That's right. The other thing is people don't realize what a bargain in some cases seafood is. I mean, when you get a whole fillet of a, any kind of fish with no bones, that's pure meat. You know, we talked about this before. What does pure chicken breast cost at the store? It's usually about the same price. If you have bone chicken breast, it's usually approximately the same price as a boneless fillet of fish. So it's still a bargain. It's pure meat, no bones. When you, when you buy it that way. But you can save some money. John's absolutely right by, by doing some of this at home. Well, maybe what we're going to help people do then is, uh, is figure out how to prepare that fish, get it ready for cooking, and maybe someday we need to do a video actually on cooking the product. But let's go on and, uh, and uh, talk about the tools now that you're going to need to prepare uh, for filleting the fish. many different types of tools or implements you can use to clean a fish. The variety is almost endless. Most people, whatever they learn on, that's what they like to use. Obviously, one of the things you're going to have to have is some sharp knives. There are many different types of fillet knives on the market. Some are stiff like this one. Some are fairly flexible. But you're going to have to keep them relatively sharp. It's not one of those kind of things that has to cut the split a hair, but it needs to be sharp. So you need some sort of sharpening steel that you can use. I like to use a, a, a very stiff short knife like this one for removing fins from things like bluegill and crappie. I'll show that in a moment. Many people are now that, that fish a lot and clean a lot of fish use electric knives. So this is something that will demonstrate it's possible to use an electric knife for almost the whole process. Once you get the hang of it, it takes a little time to learn that. For scaling fish, we can just use the, the simple table knife. That's what I typically use. A lot of people like to use a spoon, so we'll demonstrate 
straight that cleaning uh, scaled fish. And finally, you'll need a pair of skinning pliers. These are available, very, very inexpensive from most type stores that carry sporting goods. And uh, the big, broad jaws on that will help grab the skin and pull it off on the catfish or grab the fins and pull them off on scaled fish. So those are just the general variety of influence we'll be using and talking about and, and demonstrating uh, in the process of cleaning fish. John will now talk and tell us a little bit more about the way you clean, the different implements you use, how, you, how the variation in knives work, cutting board surfaces, all that. How, you know, how do you go about cleaning? Well, everybody has their preferences, Michael, and I have my preferences. Uh, one thing that I like to tell people is, is that it really makes it difficult to, to fillet fish or to process your fish on the seat of your boat, on the back of your pickup truck, uh, on the side of the stream or on the side of the reservoir. Uh, those areas sometimes are really inappropriate for doing a good job. The best thing is set yourself up with the right table, with the right conditions, even the right uh, air conditioning if that's the thing that you need. Sometimes you just have to fight off all the insects and that's really not, uh, uh, not a way to be out there trying to uh, do a good job of processing your own product. Uh, one of the things I like to have is a board. Well, first of all, I like to have a table that supports the board. This table that we're using today is a little bit low, but I like to have a working surface that uh, is large, large enough for the big fish that you're going to catch. And I like to have uh, a good working surface like this Saniplast board, which is uh, one of the types of boards, the type of plastics that's used in the commercial processing plants. Uh, it's a good quality board. All boards, though, remember, have to be sanitized so that you don't transfer bacteria from your product to the next product that you use. Uh, we can also use wooden boards. This is the traditional way to, uh, to process fish. A lot of people have wooden boards in their kitchen. Uh, this board is rigged up with a nail through the, uh, through the board so that we can attach a catfish to it and skin the catfish. It's a good board. Remember that sanitation is important and that those boards require some sort of a Clorox solution to make, make sure that they, uh, they don't uh, contain bacteria as you put your, your product on it and, uh, and process that product. When I'm working with catfish, and we're going to show you some fish in a moment, I like to use a nice cotton glove if I'm going to do a lot of these fish. If you're doing just a few catfish, it's fairly easy to pick up the fish and not have any problem with the, uh, the spines that might uh, rip your skin open a little bit. But a cotton glove grips pretty good, and there's other types of gloves, plastic gloves that have grips on them that can be used for processing the product. If you're going to the catfish uh, skinning, if you're going to skin catfish, you can do it with a knife. But the best way, the prettiest way, the product looks the best when you do it with the skinning pliers. I've seen a tremendous number of people try to use the pliers, the tool out of the toolbox, the pliers with the grips, the regular uh, household pliers or the pliers that you may use on fixing your bicycle or even uh, working on your car. But those types of pliers have grips inside and, uh, and they, when you first grip that skin, it fills up with slime, fills up with skin, and the next time you try to grip the skin, it sl slips off the skin and it's almost a hopeless situation to pull the skin off of the fish. There are different skinning pliers available from, uh, from stores all over, the, uh, all over Alabama, all over the southeast. You can find them just about anywhere. And uh, there are different types. There's different qualities. I like to have, my hands are relatively small, so I like to use one that comes together. The handles come together fairly close. The red-handled one is difficult for me to handle because the handles are so far apart. It's difficult to grip. This one is actually a more expensive one, and the handles come together and has better grips. The most important thing about the pliers is that the edges come together at about the same time. If you get one side or the other, this side or that side coming together first, it makes it harder to grip the fish. Sometimes these pliers, after they're used a lot, uh, the, the springs break on them, and you can see the different qualities of springs in here. This one actually has a larger spring than this one here. But pliers are very important. I don't recommend trying to take the skin off of a catfish without using the appropriate skinning pliers. And they are available just about anywhere. Sometimes they're in these cellophane, package, cellophane packages, and it's hard to see exactly the quality. If you can find them loose, available in the store so that you can try them out, that's the way to choose them. Uh, the other thing, of course, Michael was mentioning were the types of knives. There's a lot of different types of knives that we can use. I recommend that you not use your hunting knife. If you're out uh, uh, working with deer, processing deer, that's not the appropriate knife for fish. There are some instances where it might be uh, usable, but generally I like to work with, uh, with, uh, with uh, knives for the purpose. This knife right here in the middle is a commercial catfish fillet knife. One thing that is different about it from the other knives is that the blade is not flexible because in the processing plants, 